August of 2017, me and my son were fishing in a secluded creek. The creek is very shallow in spots, so in order to access it, you have to wade fish. We fished around a low water bridge for maybe an hour and decided to head upstream to the next deep hole of water, just over some shoals. I knew that around the bend of the creek where the deep hole was, there were lily pads. So I instructed my son to be very slow and quiet on our approach, so not to spook any bass that may be feeding around them. Once we made the bend, I observed what at first seemed to be a beaver, about 75 yards away from us, upstream, where the water is deeper. It was headed towards some large rocks, but what seemed unusual about it was its shape. It was higher out of the water than any beaver or otter I've seen. The animal got close to the rocks and just stopped, about a foot or two away from the cluster of rocks just in the water. If I hadn't seen it moving to begin with, it would have blended in very well with the rocks. I noticed my son was watching it too, and asked what is that, and I replied that I wasn't so sure, and that I made some racket with some cattle calls to maybe spook it onto the rocks, so we can get a better view of this thing. But what happened next still sends me into a mild state of fear, just recalling it. It started swimming back to the opposite bank, and just stopped for about a second. Then it rose out of the water. Now, I know what I was looking at was massive, because the water in that part of the creek is chest deep, and I vividly recall seeing the daylight between its legs. It stood there, probably three seconds at most, but the image was forever burnt into my brain. It had a reddish tint to its fur, and massive arms that just hung to its sides, almost touching the water. I couldn't see any facial features because the sun was directly behind it. After what I felt was a stare down, it lunged toward the bank that it originally came from, which was an erosion bank, about 10 feet vertical wall, and it made it up using a tree about a foot diameter to pull itself with. Doing so, it pulled the tree, roots and all, down to the water. We heard it storming off in the thickets till we couldn't hear it anymore. My son and I wasted no time getting back to the truck. Haven't been back to that spot since. Now what I'm guessing is it was at the creek doing whatever it was doing and we caught it by surprise. It mimicked a beaver trying not to be discovered. I always heard about these things and thought it to be something to see one. I wish now I hadn't seen it. It filled me with terror and excitement but who can you tell? My son hardly talks about it and I keep it all bottled up inside. My son's father and I came home from Oklahoma to the Buffalo National River area. I picked a waterfall out of my waterfall guidebook that we were going to find. We chose Hideout Hollow. When we pulled up to the parking area at the trailhead, we turned off the car. Our windows were down because we were both smoking a cigarette. At that time, I heard what sounded like if you were in the bathroom and you heard your dog sniffing under the door. I asked him in a whisper, did you hear that? He said that sounded like heavy machinery off in the distance. I let it go because I was just grateful he acknowledged the sound. We started to head down the trail when I realized we left our hiking sticks in the car. So I ran to get them myself. I had a slightly creeped out feeling but didn't worry about it too much because I could still see him the whole time. Once I got back to him, we started down the trail. We were just starting to round the corner that goes to the left when we heard a rustling in the trees to our left. We both stopped and stared and looked. We saw a huge figure running through the trees. I thought it was a man at first until I realized it was totally covered in hair, medium chocolate brown in color. I remember seeing its arms in front of it as if it were moving branches away to protect its face, and its hands were black. I whispered, what was that? And he whispered back that he had no idea. So I asked him if he wanted to go back. He nodded his head, yes, quickly. The direction it was going, it would have crossed the trail just around the curve. We turned around and started walking quickly back towards the car both of us constantly looking over our shoulder behind us. I started asking questions to make sure we saw the same thing and neither of us forgot. 
we agreed that it was on its hind legs. It was brown, and it was a lot bigger than us, and it was fast. Suddenly, something flew fast over our heads. A rock, possibly, hitting leaves and branches. I turned and looked at my son's dad with a what-the-heck look on my face, and his eyes were huge. We ran the rest of the way to the car. I had never been so scared, and I wasn't sure we would make it back to the car. We immediately began second-guessing what we had just seen, suggesting maybe it was a bear, a deer, an elk, etc. I asked him if he's ever seen a bear run like that on its hind legs, or a deer or elk that dark running, that smooth. He said no. We went to the Tea Kettle Falls area, but I was just far too scared and anxious to get out of the car again, convinced whatever it was could have easily covered ground by then. A Google search once we had service said only black bears live in Arkansas, and I'm positive that what we saw was brown. I didn't notice any smells, but since we're talking, I also did not notice if it was quiet or if any birds were chirping. I know I have no desire to return to the area. I get sick to my stomach any time I think about it. We had begun fishing along a slough a few weeks ago, and we had been catching some good fish along it. So, we decided to clear out our own spot for camping sessions along its bank. The strange things began happening, maybe a week ago now. We were night fishing along the bank when my friend Jacob spied something across the lake, looking at us. I pulled the jeep up and shined the headlights across the lake, and he caught a glint of amber-like eyes staring at us. He and Jonathan, our other friend, said that the thing was massive saying it could have went eight to nine feet tall easily. It was haunched over in a set of dead grass that stood pretty high up. It also had brown wavy fur, but other than that, I never got a good look at it, as it apparently fled before I could have laid eyes on it. Now, just last Friday, we all decided to go camping and ignore the previous encounter from that night. We set up late in the evening with the cloud skies rolling in. It rained on us a little bit, but we ignored the bad weather and even grilled some burgers over our open pit fire. Me and Jonathan eventually left Jacob alone while we went out and cut some more wood. After we left, my dog, who was actually a small dog, became really anxious according to Jacob. It would bark and howl towards the woods surrounding us, then whimper and whine to my friend. Jacob said he felt like he was being watched, but didn't wish to ruin our camping trip. He also smelt an odor because the wind had happened to shift for a moment. He says the odor was like a very small, strong-smelling gym rat after a hard workout, but perhaps magnified by 10. We returned shortly after, and eventually, I took Jacob home because of his uneasiness. Jonathan and I stayed till about 1 a.m., when the encounter actually happened. We never saw anything though. Jonathan had been sawing down a small tree for more firewood when a loud whooping, moaning sound echoed just 30 feet behind us. The sound was unrecognizable as any animal we had ever heard and we both spent many hours in the woods hunting together. He and I debated on the sound on the other side of the fire nearest to the water when it came again and this time much louder and deeper, and it sounded even closer. I told him it was time to leave as the hair on the back of our necks stood up. I pulled my dog out of the tent. The dog is usually very hyper and happy, but on this night, he cowered and refused to leave the sanctuary of the tent. Once out of the jeep, he acted very quiet and sat in the back seat, unmoving. I was so afraid by this point that I clambered into the passenger seat instead of going around to the driver's side where the sound was heard. We took off and left all of our camping gear. The bad feelings we had seemed to disappear once we had left the area. We came back the next day with our camp in good order, still, but my tent, which had been zipped up at the time, was open. I looked for any sort of sign, but could not see anything other than the burger patties were missing. Also, 
had an old hoe we used to shovel up leaves, which was halfway burnt. It had broken on us tonight, but we moved it well away from the fire. It was found near the fire and partially burnt. We also found what looked like a footprint near the area of the sound, but we could not really identify it. It was bigger than my foot though, and I were size 13s. My sighting happened over 40 years ago, and until this time, I have never written or reported anything about it, except for relaying my experience to a few family members and friends. This is the first time I've told my story. I'm 69 years old, and I believe it's time to tell my story. I'm sorry to say that time has invaded my memory, and I don't recall all the exact details. I believe it was the fall of 1977. My boyfriend and I were on our way to Callalock Lodge from Seattle for the weekend. I believe we left after work on a Friday, took the ferry to Kingston, and then traveled south along Highway 101. The incident occurred somewhere between Forks and there. It was very late, very dark, a clear night with few cars on the road. My boyfriend was driving and we were quiet, each in our own thoughts. I love animals, and I'm always on the lookout for animal sightings. I happened to notice something that looked like an animal coming up ahead on the right side of the road, in the shoulder. I didn't mention it. Instead, I was concentrating on the approaching animal and trying to figure out what it was. As the creature came into focus, I noticed it was about four feet tall standing perfectly upright, long arms, long legs, very thin with long brown hair covering his entire body and face. He was standing still, but waving his arms across his face. As we passed him, I looked out the side passenger window directly into his face, and he looked directly into mine. I gasped with surprise and disbelief. Unfortunately, my boyfriend did not see the creature and asked me what was wrong. I can't put into words what happened at that moment. I saw something that didn't fit into my realm of knowledge, beliefs, or experiences. I was scared to death and scared into utter silence. I was afraid to look back. Did it jump onto the car? Was it running behind the car? Immediately, the description that came to my mind was a monkey man. It wasn't until we arrived at the lodge that I told my boyfriend what I saw. Once I'd had more time to calm down and think about the experience, I wondered if it was the headlights on bright that could have caused the creature to freeze and wave his arms in an attempt to block the lights from his eyes. For years after this experience, whenever I retold my story to friends or family, I always referred to the creature as a monkey man. And it was not until years later when I first viewed the Patterson-Gimlin video of Sasquatch that I thought, this is what I saw, only smaller. I do believe what I saw was a young Sasquatch. I cannot be certain what I saw that night, but I know for absolute certainty is what I saw is not known to any animal that's in the Pacific Northwest. Thursday, May 14th, 2020, 10.30 a.m. Hartsburg is a small community of around 100 people. The area is on the bottoms of the Missouri River. A bike trail called Caddy Trail runs north and south through Hartsburg. My wife was taking care of her 93-year-old mother, and I decided to drive down to the river and look around. There were a lot of people riding bikes on the trail because of the pandemic going strong and nobody could work or shop. It was a sunny warm day. I was driving south slowly when I looked up ahead on the road and I saw a big figure moving across the road in a very fast pace. Not running, but walking in big fast strides. It looked like a very big person, tall, thick, and brown in color all over. I thought it was weird for a guy to be walking across a farmer's field coming east from the river and heading into a straight line in the bluffs. 
Farmers will ride their ATVs when they are in the fields, checking on things. I thought it was wearing a heavy brown coat with a cone-shaped hood. There was freshly planted soy in the fields, and I could see this thing from head to foot. When I first saw it, it was about 100 yards away. I was driving slowly. By the time I reached where he crossed the road, he had covered at least 200 yards and walking away from me. I had no camera or binoculars with me that day. I turned down a farmer's dirt road and to head toward the thing. When I merged on the road and drove toward it, it turned north and headed toward Katy Trail. I never got any closer to him than 100 yards, and that was because it was moving very fast, swinging its arms. I drove back to my folks' house after that. I was fishing on a wetland area that is owned by my family. My mother, grandmother, three-year-old daughter, and son were with me. This is an isolated farm that I don't want to ID any further online, just to help keep lurkers off the property. It is loaded with wildlife. We were sitting, spread out along a small channel. My mother, grandmother, and daughter were at the end of the channel, and my son, who was around seven at the time, was sitting next to me. My daughter was crying because she was getting in trouble for getting too close to the water's edge. It should be noted that there are a ton of alligators in the wetland and the channel. I had looked in their direction several times, and on the last time, I caught movement from the corner of my eye. I sat quietly trying to get a better look at what was moving. It was across the channel from us in a densely wooded area. I was worried it was a bear. Then, it stepped out of the trees and was looking in the direction of my daughter crying. It stood there for about 30 seconds before slipping back behind another tree. I didn't alert my family at the moment, hoping to catch another view of it. It was very large, around 8 feet tall, broad shoulders with shaggy matted fur. It stood on its back legs and appeared to be brownish to dark brown, with some lighter brown to gray around the facial area. Its arms hung down at its sides just as a human would. It made no sounds except the crunching of leaves and the breaking of a small stick here and there as it left the area. I didn't notice any abnormal sounds prior to me seeing it move. It walked away when my daughter stopped crying. I do believe it was only curious as to her crying. It didn't seem aggressive in its stance or movement. It seemed to be just sneaking a peek. I have no clue how long it had been watching us. I never felt in danger either, but I did notice a skunk trash type of odor after the sighting, but not during. I decided it was time to leave after, about 30 minutes of no further sightings, and only told my family once we were in the vehicle about to leave. This event took place in 1992 in the Feather River Canyon in Plumas County, California. I and a good friend of mine were traveling north on Highway 70, just south of the Highway 89 intersection, known as the Greenville Y. The time of year, if I remember right, was fall or spring. I remember it was not cold but not hot either, and because it is heavily wooded with evergreens, I can't place which season it was. It was dark, roughly 9.30 or 10 p.m. We rounded a left turn at 45 miles an hour, and halfway through the turn, the headlights caught an animal standing in the right-hand lane. I had time to react because of the slower speeds we were traveling at, so I turned into the left-hand lane, avoiding hitting it. I was very awed at the animal because neither of us recognized it for something we knew. It was roughly four seconds from sighting to passing it. I saw a large animal on all fours. It was facing left toward the left lane. Dark brown, or black fur, that was medium length. It was almost the size of a horse. As we rounded that corner, I noticed the rear of its first, then scanned across its body towards its head as I was seeing the legs that they were fairly long. Then I got to the head. 
This is where I was surprised because the face was flat like a person's face. No extended mouth or snout. As we passed it, it lowered its head to peer through the passenger side window of our 1987 Dodge Caravan that I was driving at the time. I live in the area, Susanville, and actually grew up here in the county, but did live in Roseville, California for 22 years and traveled through the Highway 70 Feather River Canyon to and from Susanville to visit my folks often. I have never seen anything like this creature, nor have I seen anything like it again since. Around 5 p.m., I was driving down Highway 258 just to go to the store. We have had some recent flooding, so I was driving slower than normal and watching for deer. Along the way, I seen two different area of deer. One had three that I could see. The other was at least six. So on the way back from the store, I knew to slow down in those areas just in case. In one area, it was a rather sharp curve and I had seen the most deer there. As I came up on the curve, I slowed down and suddenly, something jumped out in front of my car. I'll call it a he from here out. He seemed to have been running from the pine tree line and took a, well, what I would call a leap, out onto the road. Then he was gone. It was only one maybe two steps on the road to clear the entire road. I had slammed on the brakes and just sat there in awe, wondering if I really had seen what I did. He, or it, was standing on two legs, lots of fur, and what I would assume to be at least eight foot tall. When he jumped in front of the car, he was about a car length in front of me. He looked to have had a large fish in his hand. I know how that sounds, but I swear, it was a long fish. My husband said it may have been a stick, but I'm a country girl and I know my fish. His quote unquote fur was longer than what a bear fur would be. And although he was dark brown, it had a reddish hue to it. The headlights gave us a good look at the color as it leapt across the road. There is a lake back behind where he was running, but he also jumped across to the right where those six plus deer were standing. We are going back at first light to see if he left footprints. It's so muddy that I'm hoping to see some. We hear sounds out here, almost nightly, of what we describe as Bigfoot sounds, but I've honestly never thought they were out here. It is just sounds you can't describe, so we call it Bigfoot sounds. I've had several friends and family hear them, and one of them will not stay outside long out here because she's heard it so much. When I got home, my husband came to the door to help bring stuff in and ask what was wrong. I said the deer out here are bad, and he asked if I hit one. I said no, and he asked why I was shaking. I didn't realize my whole body was still shaking. I began telling him, and I had tears rolling down, heart pounding, and still shaking so bad. It really shook me up, so much. Not sure what else to say. It was one of the most amazing, yet scariest things I've ever seen. I know I will not sleep tonight, due to thinking about it, and what exactly happened. I'm writing this because I think that I might have had a recent experience with a Bigfoot. I live in Springdale, Arkansas. Springdale is not very rugged, as far as force goes, but it can get pretty secluded in the right places. On October 10th, 2002, me and a friend set out on a trip to follow a creek just to see how far it goes, because I followed this creek when I was young. This creek goes through Springdale and winds in through Elm Springs, where there's nothing but dense trees on one side to the left and open fields to the right. Private property. Well, Elm Springs is not a big city, and you would never know the surroundings where I was not unless you own the property. It was about 5 p.m. when I decided that it was time to try and get out of the creek and up on the bank. We had been walking about two hours in and out of the creek, 
and I decided that we could cover more ground on land before the sun went down. Now, I'm about 5'9", and I guess the creek bed must have been about 7 feet high, so I had my friend C hoist my foot up while I got my knee up high enough to pull myself up. Now, the original plan was to yank him up, once on top, but looking back on it now, I realize how foolish this was, because I would have had to been extremely strong, because I probably could have just barely have had touched his fingertips from way up there. But it didn't matter, because what I saw when I got up on my feet scared the crap out of me. The best way to explain it is just to tell you that my heart sunk, and I was extremely stunned. When I got to my feet, I was facing nothing but dense forest or woods. Something caught the corner of my eye, about, let's say, 75 to 100 yards off. Just before getting a good enough look at it, I could tell it was big and brown. Now, I've never seen a bear before out in the wild, so immediately, I started to panic. I took one quick look down and figured I would break every bone in my legs if I were to jump for the water was maybe only a foot deep. With all of this happening in what I would say just about two seconds, and keep in mind I haven't even been able to warn my friend yet of what I thought would be a charging bear, I looked back to see this thing, or whatever it was, walking extremely fast. It was then I noticed that this couldn't have been a bear. I got a clear look at it for just a second. I'll never forget what I saw that day. I remember its head, real long head, I guess you could say it was shaped kind of like an egg, I just know it wasn't like a human's. The eyes must have been dark because I couldn't make them out. I didn't really notice a nose either, but there was so much hair that it was hard to make out anything except for the head. The biggest thing I'll never forget is the height and weight of this thing. It was so big, legs covered with hair so massive that it had to be the biggest part of this thing, so wide, it had to have been as wide as a refrigerator. And comparing the legs to my legs, I would have to say that each leg made two sets of both of my legs. The shoulders were massive and could have been three feet or over from the shoulder to shoulder. I also remember how it walked. Besides taking extremely wide steps, it kind of walked with its front body slightly hunched over. I don't know, like somebody with bad posture. The height of this thing was astronomical. The tip of its head was in the treetops. Now, don't get me wrong, the trees weren't that tall, but they were at least eight to nine feet where the limbs started to curl out, and I remember the head was up there with them. There's no way I could have jumped and touched the limbs. They were just so high up. So I put whatever it was that I had seen to be eight to nine feet tall. And looking back on it now, the frame could have easily held five to 600 pounds. The arms on it looked long and they swayed back and forth heavily. I don't recall any odor or anything like that for this thing was out of my view and I'd say about five, six, seven seconds. Now, I realized when I was getting up the creek bed, I had spooked the thing because it sure didn't waste no time getting gone into the woods, and I was not about to follow it. So, with all this said, I asked my friend if he had heard anything, which he said no, just because of the running water, and I guess because he was down there, and I just said, man, I just seen a monster go into the woods. Of course my facial features were very solemn and serious, but he still didn't believe me. I repeated this several times to him and I guess he could tell by looking at my face I was serious. He later said that my face looked white and pale. With his help, I got down back into the creek, but it did take a few minutes, and even then, I wound up falling back in the creek. Luckily, I wasn't hurt, just wet and scared. The sun was setting and we jogged and trampled our way back, never once starting to go back up on land. We talked and thought better of muttering such foolishness around for fear of people thinking we were nuts. Truthfully, I don't even think he believes me, but putting myself in his shoes, I probably wouldn't either. But you know, it doesn't matter. I know what I saw, 
So in closing, I have ruled out the possibility of a hoax. Why would somebody be out in the middle of nowhere in this kind of costume? How would they know we were even coming? And how do you account for the height and size? It was easily a foot taller than any human that I've ever seen. In fact, it was so tall, you can't even duplicate that kind of height. I hope somebody reads this and takes it seriously, because I don't know if I'll ever go into the woods again after this. At around 9 p.m. at night, I was standing outside my house in rural Washington County, Arkansas, right near the Madison County border. While standing there in the yard, I heard a noise from the woods north of my yard. 16 acres of my entire 24 acres of property were thickly wooded. It sounded like a hooting, a deep-throated howl coming from the tree line. This noise occurred about three times within a 15-second time frame. At the time, my wife had just left the property about two weeks prior, and I briefly considered the noise to be made by my grandfather, who happened to live next door. I shouted toward the tree line, Hey, that's a good way for an old man to get shot. Afterwards, the hooting howl occurred twice more. My dogs, which are two coon hounds, a rat terrier, and a shepherd mutt, all bolted from the porch and headed to the tree line barking and growling, as if they saw something. I ran to the house and grabbed my 22, running out the front door and angling west along the tree line. I noticed my dogs dogging something along the wood line, with the brush and tree limbs thrashing about. I followed this thrashing line of brush, approximately 1,500 along the wood line in the pasture behind my house. As I tramped along, I realized that my dogs were still barking vehemently, yet they were still in the confines of the yard. I was alone along the tree line, with my brush thrashing guest in the dark. I paused and observed the continued limb thrashing progressing toward the west of the property. Also, during this run, I could hear thumping footsteps as if somebody were wearing heavy boots. In some realization of my potential vulnerability, I returned to my house, whereupon I immediately phoned my next door grandparents. My grandmother answered the phone. I just told her that was really funny, and she asked me what. I told her of my theory of my granddad hiding in the woods, just to scare me. She just told me, well he's sitting right here, he ain't been out all night. Indeed, I spoke with him, and he certainly did not have the time to make it back to the house and decrease his rate of breath, 75 years of age within that time frame. I believe that I walked out of the house and disturbed an exploring Sasquatch. Who knows what it could have really been. It was unusually warm to be mid-December on this day, and me and my buddy were hunting in an area known as Chiloe. It was about an hour before sunset when we climbed out of our deer stands. I met my buddy in a little holler, about 100 yards away from both of our tree stands. We were walking back to the four-wheeler when we heard a very low rumble in the holler that we had just met in. We were now at this time about 35 yards from the holler, almost in a field, so we thought we would be real still and sit on the edge of the field for a minute and see if we could hear anything else. At this time, we were thinking it was just a grunt or a blow from a deer that had scared. We waited probably 10 minutes before we heard a loud splash in a little drinking hole. Me and my buddy looked over at each other and said, what the hell is that? So we waited another minute, still hoping that a deer would come out. Then we heard a second splash. At this time, we realized it was not a deer. So we walked probably 20 yards and saw what we believe was to be a big hairy beast. It was approximately 8 feet tall and around 350 pounds. Me and my friend were almost in shock at what we had seen. This Bigfoot creature saw us and actually didn't even seem to care that we were watching it. It just kind of lingered there in the area for another minute before walking over a small ridge where we lost sight of it 
and to be honest, he kind of just lingered there around the area for another minute before walking over a small ridge where we lost sight of it. And to be honest, we were too scared to go and look for it. So we went back to the house and told everybody there, but they said we were crazy and that it was just a bear. I've been hunting bear for years and I am familiar with their movements. This was no bear. I know this because it never dropped down on all fours of its feet the whole time we watched it and we probably saw it walk a total of 30 to 40 yards, but I am 100% certain that it was no bear. It was some sort of human ape creature. I am positive. So is my buddy. Back in the summer of 1995, myself and four friends were camping at the base of a mountain in our town in eastern Tennessee. Normal night with our friends until the campfire died down. We were on an old road bed and had been breaking all kinds of dead trees for fire. As we were doing this, a lost hunting dog came to us. When it did, we gave it some peanut butter and the poor starving thing ate and then carried off the plastic jar. We didn't think anything else of him until a few hours later. The fire began dying down and me and three of my friends were sitting, leaning against the embankment as the dog came running back to us, shivering. Well, we were all kind of like, what the hell? I'm getting chills as I type this. We were looking in the direction where the dog came from, and we saw this large dark shadow just out of sight, and just out of the light, just out of our clear vision from the fire. Me and all my friends froze. The dog was whimpering, and that's not normal for a coon dog. We saw the shadow turn towards us, and we all saw the reflection of its eyes. It paused to look for all of us for 45 seconds, and then, like it was shot out of a cannon, this loud sound like it was running through the woods, breaking trees at this point. Fear had overwhelmed all of us. We had been in the area of woods many times over the years, built large fires as large as we could, and none of us slept the rest of that night. When we saw what we considered to be a Bigfoot, there was this terrible wet animal smell. It was unmistakable. To this day, I have never smelled an animal like it since. Approximately three to four years later, me and one of the guys were at the top of the mountain, not far from there, at a large natural sand cave and a large waterfall. We got bored as people do that age and went to the top of the sand cave to sit at the edge of the waterfall. As we climbed up to the top, we had that same smell hit us and that same type of destruction was present. Trees about 3.5 to 4 feet up were just broken off like the first time we ever encountered this. We looked around and followed the path as far as we could until it ran out. We all still talk about this to this day and we all get cold chills when we do. My wife was going to work around the end of July in 2002 and saw something by the side of the road. It was tall and dark colored. She slowed down because she thought it was somebody who might have broken down. The thing was at the edge of the road near a creek. As she stopped, it crossed the road and leapt onto a dirt bank about five to six feet off the road and went into the woods. A day or two later, as she was going to work, she saw something standing by the edge of the road in the same area. It was tall and dark with reddish eyes. It made no effort to come into the road and went back into the woods. All of these events occurred during the early morning hours on a remote section of mountainous road in Stony Creek section of Carter County on Highway 91. On August 1st, 2002, I was letting my dog out of the house because I thought he had to go to the bathroom. My female dog would not leave the house and my male dog went onto the porch and stared at a field adjacent to my house. This was three in the morning. He would not leave the porch and his ruff was up and he would growl really low. When I looked around and saw something in the field, about 2 o'clock from my elevated position, I could not get a direct look at what it was, 
but it was large enough to be seen, bent over in a field of nearly mature, untopped tobacco. When it realized it was spotted, it made a chuffing noise between a growl and a guttural throat sound. At this time, I noticed another figure in the field moving off into a shadowy area between a barn and a road behind my location. This was a smaller version of what was in the field near me. The thing in the field, for me, stayed there until the thing that had crossed the road made a similar chuffing sound. The dogs behind my location and in the area where this was happened were barking. The thing in the field then began to move through the tobacco field to the tall grass and finally to the tree line. I also heard a noise like something in pain, something small. This was followed by two additional series of sounds coming from an area near the creek across the road from us. This was answered by the things that had crossed through the field at my location. The only thing I got a good look at was a rounded back covered with a brownish red or light brown fur. This again happened at night and the lighting was not bad. There was also partial moon and ambient light from the property nearby. I checked the area when I observed the things in the following morning and found areas of mashed up grass and trails that roughly followed the sounds I had heard the previous night. What was unusual was that I got the impression that there was a young animal of some kind hurt. It was a mewling sound that was kind of scared that I heard the area of the second thing. I did not find any footprints that could properly be identified. I did find depressions in the grass and trails through and the still wet grass where something had moved. I also was surprised that the things seemed to communicate with each other. One of the things that is not seen or seem to be angry or upset about something. Also, the things that did not cross the road but stayed in or around the creek seemed to be looking for something. They even went so far as to climb or attempt to climb a tree. My wife and I noticed a tree by the creek moving and swaying as if somebody were climbing it. There was not enough wind to move the tree, and there was also a strong musty odor when the breeze changed and blew in our direction. August of 1984. When I was about 15, three of my friends and I were camping in the woods above my house. We had two dogs, a collie and a female husky. We had built a lean-to and to sleep under it. We were just talking about things, girls and such, when one of my friends let us know that he heard something. We just laughed at him. About two or three minutes later, two of my friends claimed to have heard the same noise as the two of us that did not hear it. So, we started making fun of them. About five minutes after that, our dogs began pacing back and forth, acting strange. Then, all at once, a loud yell came from behind the lean-to, and it shook hard. I could see it visibly shaking. We all ran, except for one, and he froze and could not move. We ran through the pitch-black woods, hitting trees and running through briars. When we got out of the woods, we turned and noticed that our friend was not with us. We yelled for him, and about two minutes later, he came out of the woods, carrying his collie in his arms. I never knew what that thing was, but my friend said that he could not see it, but that he could hear it behind him, making a grunting sound as he sat in front of the fire, and he could hear it behind him, walking as he walked out of the woods, some distance behind him. We went back the next day with an adult to retrieve our sleeping bags and things that our lean-to had been torn down. The rocks we had for the fire pit were scattered. The whole area smelt 10 times worse than a wet dog. On Friday, April 2nd, 2004, at about 5 p.m., my wife was returning by herself from a trip to drop off our daughter at a friend's house west of Wabi Lake in Milford, Indiana. She was traveling east on County Road 1100 North. She approached the intersection, which leads into Oswego, and came to a stop at the stop sign. 
she looked left, right, and briefly ahead. Before beginning her turn, she noticed movement directly ahead on the road. She saw crossing the road from left to right, heading south approximately 250 feet ahead, two large, black, hair-covered figures, taller than an average man, walking on two legs at a hurried pace. Her first reaction was to say out loud, what the heck was that? They were walking very close together, and hurrying suggested that they were aware that they were exposed in the open and wanted to get back to cover quickly. By the time she saw them, they were in the middle of the road, but she saw them take five to seven steps over several seconds. They were stooped forward and looking down, swinging their long arms quickly. After this, they entered the woods. She said they were close enough to have scared her if they had looked her way. Also, they were close enough to see they were not just men in black clothing, as there were no divisions where shirt, pants, and a hat would be, only solid black from head to toe. My wife, who is a college-educated professional, then made her turn onto 300 East, thinking she would then have something interesting to tell me immediately upon arriving home. When she reached home, however, something else unusual happened. Instead of telling me, she apparently blocked out or repressed the experience from her memory, as if in complete denial. I have been a Bigfoot enthusiast for many years and have read of this happening before people seeing a Bigfoot. It is like your mind refuses to believe what the eyes are telling it because it is so new, different, and without a reference point. About two days later, we were talking. I said something that brought her all back to it suddenly. She then told me the whole experience in detail, showing sign of alarm and even imitating the way they walked. Of course, I wasn't about to believe her without asking questions. After all, I was the biology major in college. I'm the outdoorsman, and I'm the Bigfoot enthusiast, and I'm the one who should have seen them. I asked all the typical questions that interviewees ask, and she answered them all correctly, even adding additional detail. I asked if they might have possibly been some young high school guys in black gothic clothes, as some like to wear. The answer was that they were absolutely not men in black clothes. The thought also occurred to me that she was messing with me, playing a joke to mislead me. So I asked her, this was the last straw. She got hurt and angry with me for not trusting her after 27 years of marriage. And I got the silent treatment for two days and had to do a lot of apologizing. I'll just have to agree with her based on the evidence. She saw two Bigfoots crossing the road. Wish I had seen them. Hopefully, by learning as much as I can about this creature, I will be able to remain calm enough to stay and observe it, if I ever see one, instead of freaking out and running, as most do. Some may say that your wife learned all this from listening to you go on and on about what you read on the internet. Believe me, when she tells her story, you can tell it was a very real experience for her. Whether anyone believes her or not, she knows what she saw and will say so. Okay, not just a story. This happened to us recently, here at home one night. Friday night, October 10th, 2003. Saturday morning, approximately 1 a.m. My son and two of his friends were coming home late one night, just about one in the morning, on a Saturday morning, after recent homecoming activities. Since their plans had gotten changed, I wasn't expecting them home. They were supposed to stay somewhere else. When they pulled into the yard, I was already in bed halfway sleeping. When I awoke to the sound of somebody pounding on the front door and yelling excitedly, then I heard my name and dad coming from them. So I slowly pulled myself from bed and made my way to the front room where I heard the sound of one of the bedroom windows sliding open. My son came falling through and ran to the front door just about the same time. I reached it, so we opened it and let his other two friends in. They came in very quickly, in a jumbled mess of excitement. 
they began telling me about it being down there and coming up here, and all sorts of things. I was too groggy to understand. Saturday after work, I finally sat down with two of them to hear it all again, and got the whole story, in order, and without all the confusion there had been the night before. Here's how they explained it. After pulling into the yard up near the trailer, they walked in the dark up to the porch and started to knock. Friday night, the 10th of October was right around a full moon, and the sky was absolutely clear that night. As they walked up to the porch to knock, one of the three looked back over his shoulder because he heard something and noticed a stump down in the yard, about 150 feet away, near the boats at the edge of the water. The other two looked then to see what he was talking about when the stump got up and just stood there. Even in the moonlight, they could see it was not a deer, not anything except the form of a person, because it stood there directly facing them and they could see it easily. So, as they began to knock more excitedly, it began to walk away quickly to the east on the shoreline, but then abruptly turned around and began to move much quicker right back across the yard where it had been toward the marshy area and light woods and tall grass immediately south of the porch and trailer. When my son saw this, he came running around the trailer and let himself in through the window. Now the other two could hear the sound of this guy running heavily into the tall grass, sticks, branches, and all the stuff that was down in the woods between the trailer and the lake, but then heard it starting to move closer up the hill. That's when the hard pounding and yelling to let them in really began. We let the other two in, locked the door. I went back to bed while they stayed up half the night, rehashing what had taken place and how it freaked them out. Four hours later, I was up, ready for work, and out the door at 5.25 a.m. My son had to get up and briefly talk me through what they had seen earlier. Even at 5.30 in the morning as I was leaving, the moon had made it mostly west in the early morning sky and was still so bright that I could easily make out every tree, patch of grass, boat at the shoreline. Every little thing we're used to seeing out here. Back at 1 a.m. when this happened, it was even much more illuminated with the moon directly overhead, especially with the light bouncing off the water as well. So maybe it was just some guy squatting and then standing at five inches of lake water at 1 a.m. in the middle of the country. Well, when I'm six foot and about 200 pounds and they see some guy who's way taller than me and a lot larger and built a lot larger, way taller, way larger, and gruntly slightly as he ran. We only have one neighbor, and knowing them, they don't run around in the yard or standing lake water at one in the morning, or noon for that matter. He's also not approximately in the range of eight feet tall and built large at the height. Then my son reminds me when I asked what it looked like. He says, you know, like that thing that I saw about a year ago up between the sheds one night. You see, somewhere about a year ago, he and a friend were running around with flashlights and a paintball gun after dark, when they see what they thought was a stray dog laying in some tall grass between two of our outdoor sheds. They decide to shine the light on it and then shoot a couple of paintballs at it, when it starts to get up, revealing that it isn't just a dog, just some large hairy creature, bigger than a man, but we don't know what it was, so we just kind of ran. They never saw a face, but did see large eyes that reflected an orange reddish black back at them when the flashlight hit it, as it seemed to turn its head slightly toward them. When they did see the eyes reflecting back and realized that it was indeed a head, they observed that there was no muzzle of any sort. That's when they realized it wasn't a dog. They didn't stick around for it to get up all the way off the ground. They could see that as it was getting up, it was large, hairy, more like a person and not a dog. So he really felt like this October sighting was the same thing that they had seen six or more months ago. And that's basically it. After much grilling on my part, I do believe them. 
I didn't see it myself. I wish I had the presence of mind that morning to grab a gun and stand on the porch to see if something didn't make its way up the hill in the little bit of woods. Why I didn't, I'm not sure. Too late to speculate. Only thing to do now is plan for the next time.